the Pravaja Kacharya, Asta Tarsatishimad, is divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Kijai. John Vishnu Pad Paramamsa Pravaja Kacharya, Asta Tarsatishimad, Shingu Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Maharaj Kijai, Ananti Kodi Vaishnavind Kijai, Iskan BBT Founder Charya Shila Prabhupada Kijai, Nama Charya Shila Haridas Thakur Kijai, Premsiko Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda, Shri Advaita Garadhar Shiva Sadi Gaurav Bhakta Vinda Kijai. Shri Sri Radha Krishna Gopi Gopina Shama Kun Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Kijai. Vrindavan Dham Kijai. Mayapur Dham Kijai. Navadip Dham Kijai. Jagannat Puri Dham Kijai. Nudwarka Dham Kijai. Jamunamaya Gangamaya Kijai. Tulsi Devi Bhakti Devi Kijai. Transcendental Book Distribution Kijai. Harinam Sankirtan Jagya Kijai. Harinam I mean, <coughs> Transcendental Prashadam Distribution, Kijai. The Divine Lordship, Shishi Rukmini Dorkadish, Kijai. The Divine Lordship, Shishi Jagannath Baladev, Shimati Supadra, Kijai. The Divine Lordship, Shishi Kunitai, Kijai. Gaur Pramananda Haribo. All glories to the Sama devotees, Hare Krishna. All glories to the Sama devotees, Hare Krishna. All glories to the Sama devotees, Hare Krishna. All glories to Shishi Guru, Shri Kuranga, Gaur Shri Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Today we're in from the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto. This is chapter 19, text number 18. So today we're going to be talking about interplanetary cooperation. So, uh, let's see here. Evam cha tasmin Nara Deva Deva, uh, Nara Deva Devi, sorry, Evam Chatasmin Nara Deva Devi, Prayo Pavishte, Devi, Deva, Sangai, Prayo Pavishte, Devi, Deva, Sangai, Prashasya, Bhumau, Vyakiran, Prasunar, Prasasya, Bhumau, Vyakiran, Prasunar, Muda, Muhur, Dundubayas, Cha, Nedu, Muda muhur dundu bayas chanedu. Evam chatasmin nara deva deva. Paro pavishte divi deva sangai. Prasasya bumau vyak. Kiran Prasunar Muda Muhur Dundu Bayas Chanedu Evam Chatasmin Nara Deva Devi Prayo Pavish De Devi Deva Sangai Prasasya Bumau Vyakiran Prasunar Muda Muhur Dunda Bayas Chanedu Please chant.
Pryo Pavishte Divi Deva Sangaha Pasasya Bhuma Vakiran Prasunar Muda Muhudundu Bayas Chenidu Vaishnavis Evam Chatasmin Nara Deva Deve Ayo Pavishte Devi Deva Sangha Prasasya Bhuma Vakiran Prasunar Abandon Mumbai Stene Du Evam Chadasmin Nara Deva Deve Ayo Pavishte Divi Deva Sangai Prasasya Bhuma Vikaran Pasunar Muda Muhur Dunda Bayas Chenidu Evam Chatasmin Nada Deva Deve Pryo Pavishte Divi Deva Sangai Pasha Muba Vakiran Prasunar Taipa Muda Muda Sudedu Evam Chatasmin Nara Deva Devi Pario Paviste Divi Deva Sangai Pasasha Bhuma Vikaran Prasunar Mudamu Hurdundu Bayas Chane Du Evam Thus Cha and Tasmin in that Nara Deva Devi. Upon the kings, Praya Upavishte, being engaged in fasting to death, Devi, in the sky, Deva, demigods, Sangha, all of them, Prasasya. Having praised the action, Bhumal on the earth, Vyakiran scattered, Prasunai with flowers, Muda in pleasure, Muhu continually, Dundubhyaya celestial drums. Cha also Nedu Beaten Translation and Purport by Sri the Prabhupada. Thus the king, Maharaj Prikshit, sat to fast until death. All the demigods of the higher planets praised the king's actions and in pleasure continually scattered flowers over the earth and beat celestial drums. Please repeat. Thus the king, Maharaj Prikshit, sat to fast until death. All the demigods of the higher planets praised the king's actions and in pleasure continually scattered flowers over the earth and beat celestial drums. Purport. Even up to the time of Maharaj Prikshit, there were interplanetary communications. And the news of Maharaj Prikshit's fasting unto death to attain salvation reached the higher planets in the sky where the intelligent demigods live. The demigods are more luxurious than human beings, but all of them are obedient to the orders of the Supreme Lord. 
There is no one in the heavenly planets who is an atheist or non-believer. Thus, any devotee of the Lord on the surface of the earth is always praised by them. And in the case of Maharaj Prikshit, they were greatly delighted and thus gave tokens of honor by scattering flowers over the earth and by beating celestial drums. A demigod takes pleasure in seeing someone go back to Godhead. He is always pleased with the devotee of the Lord, so much so that by his adivic powers, he may help the devotees in all respects. And by their actions, the Lord is pleased with them. There is an invisible chain of complete cooperation between the Lord, the demigods, and the devotee of the Lord on earth. Wow. Om Agyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksus Umitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurve Nama Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swamu Pagadamayam Tadati Swapadantikam Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vanchakopa Tubistha Kripa Sindhu Vipcha Patitanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namo Namaha Translation again. Thus the king, Maharaj Prikshit, sat to fast until death. All the demigods of the higher planets praised the king's actions and in pleasure continually scattered flowers over the earth and beat celestial drums. So as I mentioned, we're going to talk about interplanetary cooperation. So maybe it might be nice to just define a little bit about cooperation. And you can see it actually works amongst the smallest and the largest forms, even down to the atoms, the cells in our families, groups, nations, and even the stars and more, we see there's cooperation. It's the undercurrent beneath the progressive achievement on all levels. So cooperation means to find a common denominator in which everyone shares the benefit without imposing anyone's own personal self-interest, superiority expectations, or separative goals. So this is another idea how to look into it. And discipline means to cooperate in self-forgetfulness and act in harmony with the goal of the group, family, or the nation. And so this is what our religions actually were created to teach people to cooperate with each other and with the message of the will of the creator. But it seems like they've become like islands within themselves. So what is the goal of religion? If religions find a common goal or the supreme purpose, they will create international, global, or even interplanetary cooperation and thus achieve a greater result than one would have by non-cooperative attitudes. And what does cooperation do? It saves money, saves energy, saves time, matter, suffering. So this is, Prabhupada coined, utility is the principle. We utilize things that help us save our energy, time, and things so that we can achieve our goals. And that not that the purpose of religion? is to communicate, is to serve and to love the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So just imagine cooperation with, as we're reading here, cooperation with the great demigods and great personalities and their plans. What to speak of the Supreme Will. So what greater skill, knowledge and purity we need to cooperate with them. So Prabhupada mentions purity is the force. So just if we just chant purely, it's described, the secret is if we just purely chant, then we'll get all assistance, all cooperation. And even Christ said, if three of you come together in my name, I will be among you. So that's when we come together to share this light of transcendental knowledge, love of devotional service, and purity in trying to eliminate our selfish and egoistic hindrances and difficulties. 
So Prabhupada also coined, preaching is the essence. So this is our preaching. So as far as the demigods cooperating, as uh, mentioned in this particular verse, Sri Prabhupada's mentioning here that the demigods take pleasure in seeing someone go back to Godhead, and they're very pleased that they help us with their adivic powers. So I just happened to be reading in the, um, it's this book, what is it called? The Preaching is the Essence. And there was a similar quote, how devotees are full of compassion, like that. And I'll read here, it says, a devotee is kind-hearted. He's called Dina Nath. He's a protector of the poor. Ignorant mass of people, that's the ignorant mass of people, the poor. So Lord Krishna is also known as Dina Nath or Dina Bandhu, the master or actual friend of the poor living entities. And his pure devotees also take the same position of Dina Nath. So the Dina Naths or devotees of Lord Krishna who preach the path of devotional service become the favorites of the demigods. Generally, people are interested in worshiping the demigods, especially Lord Shiva, in order to obtain material benefits. But a pure devotee who engages in preaching the principles of devotional service as prescribed in the Srimad Bhagavatam does not need to separately worship the demigods. The demigods are automatically pleased with him and offer all the blessings within their capacity. So probably use the analogy is just like watering a tree, the root of the tree, then all the branches, twigs and everything becomes um, nourished. So the demigods, they become pleased with the devotee and they offer him all kinds of benedictions. And this was in regard to um, a narration by, of just narrating Dhruva Maharaj's uh, activities. And it says here that those who are out of transcendental kindness take on the responsibility of becoming master protectors of the poor living entities automatically gain the interest and blessings of the demigods. So just see, just by our preaching endeavors, we're actually getting this going. <clears throat> So this is that invisible chain. And Prabhupada mentions how if we're just running around like animals, you know, just trying to enjoy our senses independently, then what is the difference between us and the animals? You know, we've, the, the animal, the dog has a female mate, we have a female mate, so what's the difference? How are we civilized? And Prabhupada says, we think we have our dog chained, but I'm not chained. He says, you're chained by Maya, this invisible chain that he doesn't know. So this is that we can be, there's an invisible chain between cooperation, between demigods and things like that. But also, there's an invisible chain that if we're in the mode of ignorance or performing sinful activities between the divic energies also can chain you and bind you. So this refers to this Maya Sukhaya that's described in the seventh canto by Prahlad Maharaj. And this is the verse, it's 7943. O best of the great personalities, I am not all afraid of material existence. For wherever I stay, I'm fully absorbed in thoughts of your glories and activities. My concern is only for the fools and rascals who are making elaborate plans for material happiness and maintaining their families, societies, countries. I am simply concerned with love for them. So in the purport, Sri Prabhupada nicely describes how we're making big, big plans in this world to try to become happy. These elaborate plans, social, political, cultural plans, but they're all described as vimudhas. They're fools and uh, <clears throat> They're just trying to enjoy something temporary and miserable. So Prabhupada says they're trying to turn this place into Sukhalayam, a place of happiness, but they do not know the arrangement of material nature. And Prabhupada quotes that verse, Prakriti Kriyamanani, Guna Karmani Sarvasaha, Ahankara Vimudhatma, Kartaham Iti Manyate. That the bewildered spirit soul, under the influence of the three modes of material nature, thinks himself the doer of activities that are in actuality carried out by nature. So everyone's struggling very hard 
you know, through these modes of ignorance and passion, trying to conquer material nature. But at the end, they're conquered and vanquished by these laws. And uh, Prabhupada mentions in his purport also about this river known as the Vaitarani. It's between the material and spiritual worlds. And we have to cross that river to reach the spiritual world. But it's very extremely difficult. And Prabhupada quotes that verse, Daivihi Eshikunamai, again, that this divine energy is very difficult to overcome. So this is that Durataya, meaning very difficult. So it's very difficult to, to surpass these stringent laws of material nature except only by the mercy of the Lord. So this is our, our uh, only grace. So Prabhupada here says, as for Prahlad Maharaj, he was not at all unhappy for although he was in the material world, he was full of Krishna consciousness. Those who are Krishna conscious trying to serve the Lord are not unhappy. Whereas one who has no assets in Krishna consciousness, he's struggling for existence and not only foolish, but extremely unhappy also. So we see, even though we say there's full of miseries in the material world, but also, but also there's happiness. And the devotees are showing how to become happy is by serving Krishna. And then you actually experience happy. So Prahlad Maharaj is an example of that. Excuse my throat, is it dry today? So in regard to this interplanetary travel and, and communication, there's some nice references in Sri Prabhupada's books. And right in the introduction to the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Prabhupada says, the living entities are traveling from one planet to another, but it is not that we can go to any planet we like merely by mechanical arrangement. If we desire to go to other planets, there is a process for going there. And then he mentions that verse, Yanti Deva Vrata Devin Pitrin Yanti Pitri Vrata Ha. So <clears throat> there's no necessity of this mechanical arrangement. So Prabhupada mentions here that the Bhagavad Gita informs us how to travel to the higher planetary systems. Devaloka with the very simple formula, Yanti Deva Vrata. So this is the, the process. You only need to worship a particular demigod of that particular planet and then you could go there like to the moon or to the sun or any other higher planetary system. But Prabhupada mentions here that yet the Bhagavad Gita does not advise us to go to any of the planets in this material world because even if we go to Brahma Loka, the highest planet, through some sort of mechanical contrivance by maybe traveling for 40,000 years and who would live that long? We will still find the material inconveniences of birth, death, old age, and disease. So his encouragement is that we should go to Krishna Loka, to the spiritual planet. And there we can, you know, have a really truthy, truthful, blissful life. So in that verse in the Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada was mentioning this uh, Yanti Deva Vrata Devan that if you worship the demigods, you go to those places. And if you worship ghosts and spirits, you also go with those, go to those. So this process to travel is known as Darsha Purnamasi. So this is described in the fruit of activities of the Vedas. So Prabhupada mentions in the end of that purport, it is very easy to understand through this important verse that if simply by worshiping the demigods, one can achieve the higher heavenly planets or by worshiping the pitas, achieve the pita planets, or by practicing the black arts, achieve the ghostly planets. Why can the pure devotee not achieve the planet of Krishna or Vishnu? Unfortunately, many people have no information of these sublime planets where Krishna and Vishnu live. And because they don't know of them, they fall down. So this is what happens. So we're Prabhupada mentions, the Krishna conscious movement is therefore distributing sublime information to the entire human society to the effect that simply chanting Hare Krishna mantra one can become perfect in this life and go back home, back to Godhead. So there's another reference in regard to Bhishma Dev. 
when Bhishma Dev was passing, also, he was such a great personality, a Mahajan, great authority. It was described that he was on the level of Brahma, Narda, and even Shiva, and even though he was a human being. So it's described that when he was passing, all the the demigods also came and they they uh, they sounded drums in honor. And the highest royal order commenced demonstrations of honor and respect, both men, demigods. And from the sky f fell showers of flowers. So this is also another example. So Prabhupada mentions in the purport <clears throat> how um, thus Bhishma Dev was known all over the universes. And during his time, interplanetary travel was affected by finer methods than by the futile endeavors of mechanical spacecraft. So we could see here how this is also described. <clears throat> and again, in the, regarding Mahama, Mahatma Vidura, who was also treated like a godly person by his kingsman, and he, when he came back to uh, help Dhritarashtra go home, it's described there that uh, he was treated very nicely. And Prabhupada in the purport to this verse of 113.14 says, saintly persons like Vidura must be treated as well as a denizen from heaven. In those days, denizens of heavenly planets used to visit homes like that of Mars Yudhisthir, and sometimes persons like Arjuna and others used to visit higher planets. Narda is a spaceman who can travel unrestrictedly, not only within the material universes, but also in the spiritual universes. Even Narda used to visit the place of Maharaj Yudhisthira and what to speak of other celestial demigods. So Prabhupada here gives the clue of how this interplanetary travel is possible. He said, it is only the spiritual culture of the people concerned that makes interplanetary travel possible even in the present body. So just see, this is the possibility. So another quote here is from uh, the first canto, also 16th chapter. And this is regarding Maharaj Prikshit. And uh, it's described here in this verse that he performed these sacrifices, horse sacrifices, and he invited all the demigods and they even came. And the common people could even see these demigods. So Prabhupada writes in the verse that uh, <clears throat> that the den this entertainment Interplanetary travel by the denizens of higher planets was very easy. And how they used to visit Earth and hear this example. So Prabhupada says, The demigods are not generally visible to common men, as the Lord is not visible. But as the Lord, by his causeless mercy, descends to be visible to the common man. Similarly, the demigods also become visible to the common man by their own grace. Although celestial beings are not visible to the naked eyes of the inhabitants of this earth, it was due to the influence of Maharaj Prikshit that the demigods also agreed to be visible. So we see here it's by mercy. And then another case, we have King Pritu also. When he was performing a very great jagya, all the sages, brahmanas, demigods from higher planetary systems, they also came and uh, they assembled together there. And in that purpose, Srila Prabhupada says that uh, <clears throat> this indicates that formerly the demigods used to come to this planet. Similarly, great personalities like Arjuna, Yudhisthira, and many others used to visit higher planetary systems. Thus, there was interplanetary communication via suitable airplanes and space vehicles. So, this is very nice. And um, this is another... Uh, from the fifth canto, this is in the activities of Maharaj Priyavarta. And the Prabhupada mentions here that according to the Brahma Samhita, each universe is filled with different planetary systems, and every planetary system has a unique opulence. So, therefore, we know some planets they have mystic powers, you know, other planets they can fly, and there's so many different things. Some are very expert in music, and in some places they're all great saints. So Prabhupada mentions here that the interplanetary system undoubtedly exists and residents of different planets may go from one to the other. On this earth, however, 
We have not invented any machine that can go directly from one planet to another, although an unsuccessful attempt has been made to go directly to the moon. So here again, Prabhupada's you know, reminding them that you didn't really go to the moon. So Prabhupada also, <clears throat> in Easy Journey to Other Planets, mentions this. And this is in uh, chapter 2, Varieties of Planetary Systems. In these days, when men are trying to go to the moon, people should not think that Krishna consciousness is concerned with something old-fashioned. When the world is progressing to reach the moon, we are chanting Hare Krishna. But people should not misunderstand and assume that we are lagging behind modern scientific advancement. We have already passed all scientific advancement. In Bhagavad Gita it is said that man's attempt to reach higher planets is not new. Newspaper headlines read, Man's first steps on the moon. But the reporters do not know that millions of millions of men were there and came back. This is not the first time. This is an ancient practice. So Prabhupada's telling us it's not new. It's known to the devotees. We're not old-fashioned. We know what's happening. So and then in, the, in the Path of Perfection, Prabhupada has a chapter on destinations after death. And he talks about here how the soul, it's very minute, and how this particle is maintaining the body. And he says, the object of the Sat Chakra system is to locate the soul at the topmost part of the head. From there, one who is perfect in dhyana yoga can transfer himself to a higher planet at will. That is the perfection of this yoga. And then he says, the dhyana yogi is somewhat like a traveler who thinks, oh, let me see what the moon is like. Then I will transfer myself to higher planets. He goes from here to there in the universe just as the earth travelers go from New York to California and Canada. But a Krishna conscious person is not interested in such interplanetary travel within the mature universe. His goal is service to Krishna and transferal to the spiritual sky. There's a story when Sri Prabhupada was in his room and he was looking and the sun rays are coming through his window. And he was saying how yogis can go on these sun rays and travel to the sun. Prabhupada says, no, I know because I have, I have experienced it. <laughs> he might have just went there and said. So, <clears throat> there's a lecture by Srila Prabhupada in Vrindavan on the Srimad Bhagavatam in 1972. And he was describing here how if you increase your consciousness more and more, then it may be interplanetary consciousness. But what is this interplanetary this universe contains millions of planets. That's all right. But there are millions of universes also. So he quotes that Yasya Prabha Pabato Jagat Anandi Kota from the Brahma Samhita. So this is how getting rid of that self-centeredness, body consciousness, we become family-wise, community-wise, you know, society-conscious. But, you know, what about interplanetary conscious? What about international conscious? And Prabhupada had this consciousness. That's why he traveled all over the, the world. <clears throat> so another lecture, Srimad Bhagavatam lecture, by Srila Prabhupada, he states here, that Maharaj Priksit was so exalted king that by his invitation the demigods would come and the public could see that was possible. So he said the kings would invite and then they would come. So this is how it was going on. So Prabhupada says, you can go but you must be purified or qualified. Priti Vrata Deva Vrata. Similarly, you can go to Krishna also if you're a Krishna Vrata. Mad Yajino Pi Yanti Mam. What to speak of going to other planets? If one is qualified, if one is a pure devotee, Krishna says, He also comes to me. So this exchange of going and coming is not difficult, provided one is qualified. So this is so nice. Another lecture, Sri Prabhupada talks about Narda Muni who can travel in this universe and in the spiritual universes at will. So this is so nice. So it says here that it is only by spiritual culture of the people concerned that makes interplanetary travel possible, even in the present body. So there's so many nice uh, references here. <clears throat> Prabhupada talks about how we can actually go to these planetary, higher planetary systems if you're qualified. 
So what to speak of going to the spiritual world? We can go there too if we become qualified. Mm. So there's an interesting uh, uh, article that Judah Karma wrote in the Back to Godhead magazine. And it's regarding, uh, the title was, <clears throat> what is the title? <clears throat> is that instead of waiting to hear from other galaxies, we should listen to the Vedic literature which tells us all we need to know about the universe and the spiritual world beyond it. So he's writing how in our government agencies, they have these ideas to explore and see if there's intelligent beings on other planets and other civilizations. And maybe they could give us some help to solve our problems that we face here on Earth. So he says that they're waiting to hear these signals. And Judah Karma's point is that, why do you have to wait? We already have the information here through these Vedic literatures. You know, we don't have to check out these distant stars. And he mentions here that we actually ourselves are extraterrestrials. We're temporarily residing in an alien environment, forgetful of our home beyond this universe. So he talks about, it's a very nicely article that you can find. And he says that, <clears throat> that these Vedas, where can you find this information? Ancient Vedic uh, information. And he says the Vedas have existed in written form for thousands of years. And as an oral tradition, they stretch back even further. And he says, a uh, summary of the Vedic truth in the, is the Bhagavad Gita. And it reveals that the Vedas did not originate on this planet, but instead they are part of a coherent body of knowledge designed to help the leaders of a far-flung interplanetary civilization guide their citizens to correct solutions of life's material and spiritual problems and ultimately direct them back to their higher dimensional home. So just see how it mentioned how Prabhupada in the purport says that there's no atheists on the higher planetary systems. They have this knowledge and they're all devotees of Krishna. Except for here we have a few people that are not... So um, so here, uh, Judah Karma continues. We can take information from the books of Vedic knowledge, principally the Bhagavad Gita, that there is a fact, planets beyond these now visible to us, and they are inhabited. Lord Krishna is proclaimed in the Bhagavad Gita to be the source of all that exists, living or non-living. Therefore, if one has questions about the nature of the universe, it makes sense to look to Krishna, the creator for reliable answers. Just as one would learn about the composition or intended meaning of a meaning of a painting by asking the artist. So he goes on and on describing how we don't have to vainly wait for, you know, to hear from other galaxies in the mature universe. We just have to listen to Krishna's instructions of the Bhagavad Gita. So just engage your mind in Krishna. Always think about him. And there's an interesting... Uh, uh, <clears throat> there's a book written by Mori John about his glorious master. He talks about Srila Prabhupada. And he was quoting Prabhupada. He was talking one time how he said during uh, one evening lecture, Srila Prabhupada, he was boldly talking about these giant eagles that fly from one planet to another. And the, they eat elephants, actually. And then they hatch their eggs in outer space. And with the atmospheric friction, these they actually, uh, the eggs are hatched in, in space like that. So he was very boldly and talking about that. And then one, <clears throat> then Prabhupada says, any questions? And then one devotee had the nerve. He was like, um, they fly from one planet to another? Uh, that's kind of hard to believe. And Prabhupada even became more bold and stood up really straight, and, or sat up straight and says, what do you know? You're still in the womb of your mother. So he was bringing out the point that we have such an illusory perception of reality. You know, this devotee is from, from Australia, so he had his Australian cultural biases, you know, his finite intelligence, his faulty cognizance, and he's just a spiritual baby, you know. He's still in his babyhood. So it prevented him to understand what's going on. So here you can imagine how because of this interplanetary cooperation that we have this knowledge coming in all of the universe, we can actually elevate our consciousness, expand our consciousness beyond our own selfish little world that we have. And if you read Bhakti Tirta Swami's books, 
he's always talking about these things. And in his spiritual journey, the Black Lotus, he talks about how for world peace, he argued, a new community of human beings would have to emerge. This would be comprised of people who use more of their dormant faculties. Progressive individuals who see themselves as part of a global family. Indeed, such people would identify themselves as part of an interplanetary family as well. So can you imagine that? So, um, and then he was, he was describing here different questions and answers in another book that he wrote. It's called the Harinam Chintamani. And uh, different questions, people are saying, I feel so offensive when I'm chanting. I feel like I'm in a state where I can't get out of this thick crust. You know, man, what could I do? You know, so uh, he said here that Srila Haridas Thakur is sending us a, shri, a secret message that you know, his instructions may seem overwhelmed and beyond our range to understand and experience. But then he indicates how we must constantly beg for Krishna's constant mercy. In Kali Yuga, the Lord knows that offenses enter into all our activities, but he also knows the nature of our environment. For this reason, so many interplanetary beings want to come to this planet while Lord Chaitanya's mercy still exists. They realize that these goals are so difficult to reach, but in Kali Yuga, the souls are given special mercy in spite of our doubts, fears, weaknesses, and limitations. So that's so encouraging that it's so difficult and we're so covered that you know we get special mercy in this age and so much mercy that even the higher planetary living entities want to come here and take advantage of that. And then he also mentions in one of his books about the Egyptians, how people were understanding the Egyptians and how they understood how they had actually control of the whole planet and they actually had knowledge of the entire planet and they had connections with uh, uh, other higher beings actually and he said that we should act locally and globally and think in interplanetary terms so this is how we should not be stagnated but actually learn like that so to end the class there's a few examples that we can see how the demigods have actually assisted and helped us. And it reminded me of that one story where Indra actually hit George Harrison's house. So Srila Prabhupada wanted to preach, right? He wanted to publish his books and distribute them. And he asked Shamasundar to ask George Harrison if he could give some money to print that book. And he was afraid because he knew that George Harrison didn't like to be asked for things. They would just give him, give him, and then he would just give it his own will. So when he got up the nerve to ask George Harrison, he didn't want to take the blame. So he said, Prabhupada told me to ask you if you could help print, if you could print the Krishna book, because he just finished. He has the, he has the uh, what do you call it, the document? Manuscript, yeah. And then George Harrison's face just turned like really sour. Oh yeah, you know, it's like thinking you guys are like everyone else, just want my money, like that. But then all of a sudden, a thunderbolt hit the house and all the lights went out. And then George, after the lights came back on, George Harrison had a big smile on his face. And he's like, what can I say? <laughs> so he gave. And then we have other, other examples of, sometimes we're in Rathyatra, there's an example of devotees are talking about how it's raining like crazy, but right before the parade, the rain stops or during drought in South India there was a great drought and the pundits were performing jagnas and tirupati and there was no luck until Prabhupada sent all the devotees on Harinam and then profuse rain came so this is what happens even Sankarshan Prabhu was saying when he was in the Fiji Islands it was so drought there and he had a gave a lecture to all the students all the students gathered together this one school and he said that if you all chant Hare Krishna, then it'll rain. And everybody in the school chanted and it rained that afternoon. So many of you, I'm sure even Vijay Prabhu probably has some nice stories how sometimes the demigods help the devotees. Even another story, in the beginning, Shama Sundar talks about, in those days, they just depended on Krishna, no matter what. Like they didn't even have money for rent or whatever. And they would go out praising, you know, chanting Krishna. And then all of a sudden they see these $100 bills just flying down the street. 
and they'd pick them up and it'd be enough for the rent. He's like, in those, he said, those days it seems like we don't have that same kind of mentality today, he was saying. But we have to really be surrendered and chant purely and then all the assistance will come. Anybody have any examples they can share about this or any questions or comments? Okay. Well, thank you very much for your kind attention. All glories to Srimad Bhagavatam. All glories to Prabhupada.